Spring is here and you need to get in on selling planters. I've got one design selling already that's a modification of Matthew Peach's picnic table design. Link in the description if you'd like to check that out. This video shows how to make this planter design. If you don't already have a good design that you're comfortable building, this one's for you. I designed this planter for speed, so you can get a batch of these built in just a few hours. We've all started a project that we we're told would be quick, but it ends up taking twice as long as promised. It's kind of like making something out of one of those 20 minute recipe books. The prep time says five minutes, but then it assumes you've already cooked rice, which takes 20 minutes to do. And even then you'll have to cut up a bunch of veggies at light speed without losing a finger to even come close to 20 minutes. So my goal is to make this honest video on making these planters in 45 minutes or less each. And if you stick around to the end, I'll prove it to you. Also, if you're interested in free plans, be sure to follow the link in the description to sign up for the Luger Creek Woodworks newsletter. After signing up, you'll get the plans sent directly to your email. This planter is gonna use three and a half fence pickets of material. I'm using cedar pickets for these, so the total cost will come out to around $10 each. There are three key elements to the design of these that make them fast. The first key is in board preparation. Sanding can end up taking a long time, so we're building these more on the rustic side and foregoing sanding of the boards. Of course, if you have any egregious spots or strange marks in your pickets, feel free to do some spot treatment. The second key to making these planters quickly is making the cut list as simple as possible. To do this, I've set most of the critical dimensions of the build to 14 inches. Since I'll be using this measurement so much, I'm gonna make a 14 inch long stick so I don't have to keep measuring with a tape measure. Just use some scrap wood, like those two by four round over edges you've had for three years but can't bring yourself to throw out. I know you have an entire bucket of them somewhere. Measure out 14 inches, make the cut, and be sure to label it. Use that stick to measure and cut three pickets down to 14 inch panels. You should end up with 15 panels total. Next, clean up one edge of each of the panels you just cut out using your table saw so that the boards will be as square as possible. Once you've cleaned up one edge, we will need to consult the cut list. From the cut list, we see that 10 panels need cut Cut down to five inch width. These will be our side panels and two of the bottom support panels. One panel will be set aside. This one is designated to be cut to the right width for the third bottom support panel. And then with the remaining four panels, we need three boards from each one. This diagram shows what we are after. From each panel, we want one two inch strip and two inch and a half strips. Start with a table saw at two inch width. Run each of the four remaining panels through one time each. Next, set the saw at inch and a half. Run those same four panels through twice each. Finally, take four of the one and a half inch boards over to the miter saw and cut them down from 14 inches long to just 12 inches long. Now we have all of our boards cut except for the trim, which we'll get to later. Now it's time to assemble the planter. This is where the third key to building these quickly comes in. This design actually makes all of the panels identical to each other. So really, you could batch out a bunch of panels and then assemble them all at the end if you'd like. And there's no risk of getting anything mixed up. I like to start by building the corners of these planters. This requires one two inch wide leg and one inch and a half wide leg. Arrange them so they look like this. I'll add a bit of glue, Line them up flush on the edge and bottom, then use one inch brad nails to hold them in place. Repeat this step for the other three corners. Once you have all four corners put together, we'll build the panels. I'm securing these with wood glue and one inch brad nails. Lay one of the corners you put together down on the table like this. The short end should be flat on the table. To the right of that, lay down another board just for support while building the panel. Add glue to the corner piece from the bottom of the leg up about 10 inches so that it will secure both panels. Place the first panel flush with the corner piece and secure it in place with brad nails. Put the second panel flush against the first one and nail it as well. You've now built the first panel. We'll repeat this process three times with the remaining boards. After we have all four panels made, we need to attach them together. Take two panels and line them up as shown here. The finished product will have a narrow leg and a wide leg on each of the four sides. Get the panels flush with the adjacent corner and secure it with glue and one inch brad nails. Work around the planter in a circle, attaching each side as you go. The last side is a little challenging because you have to glue up two corners at once. After all the sides are secure though, it should look something like this. The frame might feel a little wobbly at this point, but don't worry, we're about to fix that. Now that the frame is built out, we need to add the bottom panels that hold up the dirt and plants. Start by attaching the bottom supports we cut out earlier to 12 inch lengths. There is one for each panel. Align the bottom edge flush with the bottom edge of the panel. Glue and nail these into place. Now we can add the bottom panels. Using one of the five inch wide panels remaining, mark the proper length with your pencil. Cut to the right length of the miter saw. This panel should now slide tightly into place and rest on the 12 inch pieces we just installed. I like to add glue to these as well before nailing in place. Repeat this process with another five inch panel. There will still be a space left behind. This will be filled with a panel we set aside a while ago. Measure the proper width from the bottom, then cut to the proper size for a good fit. The final phase is to add the trim. This phase will use the half board we haven't touched yet. Clean up one edge of this board at the table saw and cut a strip at an inch and a half wide. We will need four pieces at a length of 14 and 7 8 inches to complete the trim. I recommend making another measuring stick for this since it's a tough measurement to do. After all those are cut, switch over to inch and a half brad nails, glue and nail the trim from above as shown here. The long edge of the trim should be flush with the inside edge of the planter box. This means that the short edge of the trim is flush with the edge of the adjacent panel as shown here. 
Work your way around the top edge, gluing and nailing the trim down. The finished product will look something like this. Now I know I said there was no sanding on this build, but if the trim links didn't come out perfect, you can sand them down a bit to better align. So now that I've shown you how to make these, I want to prove the time it takes to build. This time lapse shows me making one of these planters from start to finish. This was a few days after making the first one that you can see sitting on the floor. So building it was not fresh on my mind. You'll see me checking my phone throughout as I'm reviewing the process and the plans for the build. As you can see from the clock in frame, it ends up taking about 42 minutes to make the second one. So really that's all there is to it. Hey guys, Corey here. Just a couple tips before you go. I sold about four of these planters this week. I'm listing them at $40 a piece, but if you buy two, it's 70 total. I think the best thing you can do marketing wise right now is to put these as a Mother's Day gift. So I've listed that on several of my items now and they seem to be selling a little better. If you have any questions or tips on selling them, be sure to drop in the comments. Remember, your time is valuable, so I'd highly recommend picking up the free plans as I've already thought through the process of doing this efficiently. If you do end up using the plans though, please drop a comment or send me an email telling you what you thought of them. Good and bad feedback are both okay. I would really appreciate this feedback so I can make better plans in the future. Thank you for watching. Subscribe not to miss out on any more content. Catch you in the next one.